I'm Dr. Moses Achan, Senior Lecturer at the Department of Pharmacology and Therapeutics, uh, Macquarie University College of Health Sciences, School of Biomedical Science. I conducted a study uh, under my postdoc fellowship, uh, sponsored by Nature, and the study was on artemisinin uh, resistance emergence and chloroquine resistance reversal in Uganda. Malaria, which was the focus of this study, is an endemic disease in Uganda. We note that about 5 in 10 people visiting the outpatient clinics in the hospitals in Uganda are reporting malaria symptoms, so are coming because of malaria-related symptoms. And about 2 in 10 individual children under 5 who are dying in the hospital are dying because of malaria. So malaria is a big problem in the country and its treatment uh, needed to be assessed in the current situation in which we are experiencing uh, delayed parasite clearance amongst patients who are taking uh, coatem or the artemisinin medications. So then the study was premised on the fact that we want to find out what is happening on chloroquine efficacy in the country and also to assess the status of chloroquine uh, susceptibility or sensitivity amongst the parasites. Knowing that Uganda changed uh, the malaria treatment policy in 2006, shift from chloroquine to artemisinin-based regimens. At that time, there was 100% chloroquine resistance. So we needed to see uh, over a decade or so after removal of chloroquine from being used in malaria treatment, could they have changed its sensitivity in other words, is the sensitivity re-emerging to chloroquine among the plasmodium parasites. Then we also wanted to assess to find out the status of uh, artemisinin efficacy in the country at a genotypic level. So this study was done in three steps. First, we did a systematic review in which we looked into the available evidence on chloroquine sensitivity or chloroquine resistance reversal amongst malaria endemic countries uh, globally. Then we also did a systematic review to assess the evidence on genetic markers for artemisinin resistance or coatem resistance, again in malaria endemic uh, countries. So after all this searching and contacting experts in the field of uh, of uh, malaria and screening the reference sources of the studies, we came up with 4,000 studies. So we, I duplicated the studies to remove the duplicates and then the remaining ones were screened to pick out the studies that were included in the systematic review. Then we had the lab components in which we assessed the parasites which we are collected uh, amongst malaria in affected children in Busia and Kampala. We assessed to establish a presence of uh, genetic markers for artemisinin resistance. Then thirdly, we also looked into the parasite to find out the genetic predisposition to the emergence of artemisinin resistance in the Ugandan parasites. So we, we found uh, that from the systematic review on chloroquine resistance reversal, that there is a general decline in the prevalence of genetic markers for chloroquine resistance. In other words, chloroquine sensitivity or susceptibility is re-emerging amongst the plasmodium falciparum parasites. So at the moment we don't stock chloroquine because it was completely phased out. Currently the Ugandan clinical guidelines recommend the use of atmesinine dairy products for treatment of both complicated and uncomplicated malaria. So for complicated malaria we usually use a test net which has been working well and is continuously still working. And then um, we also use at, at methylomethantrine, commonly known as coatem for treatment of compli uncomplicated malaria. However, m probably due to overuse of the drug as well as self-prescriptions, 
self-treatment and all those other things, it has actually, over time, failed to work for some people. The implications of these findings uh, to malaria treatment in the country, we, we note that the persistent or continued, although in low levels, of cropping resistance still in the country. In other words, we don't have complete reversal yet of cropping resistance. You find that the, the evidence does not support the reintroduction of cropping since there is still uh, a certain level of parasites that are resistant to cropping in the country. As for atemesinin or the coatem medication in the country, though patients in the community, some are reporting that when they take the medicine, the symptoms persist. The molecular work that we, do, we did do not support widespread resistance in the country. So the, these, these patients, when they take this medication, they, again, they repeat the dose. The parasites eventually get cleared. What we see in atomacin resistance is a slowed parasite clearance, not widespread resistance, or not full-blown resistance, meaning that when you take this medicine and you still continue experiencing the symptoms of the disease, you, you repeat the dose. And we have seen that when patients repeat these doses, the symptoms eventually, eventually clear.